It's the start of a long night shift for paramedic Matt Stringfellow. Checking this life-saving kit and supply of emergency drugs is crucial. He doesn't know what the next 12 hours will have in store. It's not long until we drop everything for a 999 call. It's winter and a busy few months lie ahead. We're off to a uh, report of quite a serious road traffic collision. A lorry has come off the motorway and crashed. Oh, a 50 year old now, constant breathing. Unpredictable weather and dark mornings means the number of these calls can increase. This is one of hundreds of shouts Matt and his colleagues at East Midlands Ambulance Service will get during the shift. Seems like the gentleman has been uh, relatively uh, lucky with his injuries. Obviously we can't tell the full extent without further hospital assessment. Back at base, he tells me a little more about the pressures on the service. Last winter was their busiest yet, and they're expecting things to be even worse this year. The call demand goes up, um, a variety of uh, winter illnesses, uh, chest infections, flu-like symptoms. I think our, our message as an ambulance service is to think wisely before phoning an ambulance. Sadly, an under-pressure service still receives unnecessary calls. Hello, ambulance patient breathing. Can you keep your box of eggs open? We can't. This is the ambulance service. We can't advise you about eggs, I'm afraid. This was just one of them, and that's putting lives at risk, says Matt's colleague Helen, who's been in the service 14 years now. We are emergency response vehicles. What really has that person called an ambulance for? And do they really need us help, or are they just calling 999 because they don't actually know who else they can call for help? Is there any backup on route at the moment? Over? But for those calling tonight, they desperately needed help. A paediatric patient who's fitting at this time of year is likely to be a febrile convulsion. Due to the next shout was to a child. This was a Category 1 call out, the most serious. I think she feels really warm, so I think it's probably febrile. Okay. We've protected the family's identity. The little girl was taken to hospital after being treated by technician Stacy. Mum has managed to give buccal midazolam, which has worked quite well. It's reduced slightly the tremors, but they are, as you can see as well, still quite evident. OK. Matt is working on Christmas Day. He knows it won't be a celebration for everyone. People still take ill and pass away. But he'll be there helping people in need. So these are extremely difficult cases, both emotionally and, um, I suppose, professionally. The, the priority is treating the patient, but also the patient's family and relatives absolutely are part of that patient care. We've been on the front line with the ambulance service on a 12-hour shift. At the end of the day, there are still people waiting in need. But over the winter months, they will continue to be there for us. In challenging times, they remain dedicated, determined, doing all they can to help.